to the stuff we can knock out, right? So come on up. You can bring your book with you if you want or just go by what this says and let's see how many of these we can, we can knock out, right? And on your way out, grab what's in your folders. But come on, let's see how many of these we can do. Oh, we haven't gone to... You guys haven't done this, haven't you? We've never gone to these chalkboards? We have, yeah. Let's go up to the chalkboards and do these. Caroline hasn't, right? All right. So bring your, your book with you. Spread out as much as you can. Okay. Do you remember how to handle this first one? So there's, there's room back there, too. There's a board over there. All right. How do you handle this first one? Does anyone remember? What was the game plan for? They give you the mass of all the parts and the fraction of the whole that that part is. What did we do? We multiplied them. Right. Summer's right. We multiplied them. Then what did you do? Then you, you multiplied the mass times its fraction. Then you add them all up, and it better match what? Because they're after the molar mass of an element. It better match the molar mass up here. Right. Does that make sense? So it, you're doing it right if you get an answer that matches something on the periodic table. Okay. Make sense? So the 27.977 times its fraction. The 28.976 times its fraction. Right? We add them all up. Hopefully we're going to get something on the periodic table. Now, I didn't say anything about sig figs, so we probably don't have to write out all those gazillion digits, but I want to write down most of them probably. Is anyone not sure what to do? I see a bunch of totals of 28.08 or so. I better match something up there, otherwise we messed up. That glare. You see it? It matches what? Silicon. Hopefully you're getting it to match silicon. Right? Well, we'll get to that. We'll get to that one. Just, just wait a little second. All right? That makes sense? So whether you got the final answer or not is not what the goal of this is. The goal of this is for you to see this type of question and know immediately what to do. Right? Do you see that? When you see a question that has its mass and these abundances, know exactly what to do. Because you're going to have 10 questions. So you want to know exactly what to do on every single one. You're going to multiply them, add up the parts, and it better match something over here. Make sense? Okay, on the board, 
write your answers to 78A there. Name those guys. Write your answer for the name of Na2SO4 and Na2O. Okay. That's okay if you didn't quite finish 54, just so you know what to do when you see a question like that. Write down your, your answers for Na2SO4 and Na2O. Now, let's say you have no idea, right? Would you guess, for either of the, yeah, you're going to guess, but would you guess di, tri, mono stuff? Definitely no. Because you see a what? A metal. If you have no clue, don't guess mono, di, tri, tetra, nothing. Because there's a metal there. It's got to be the cation and the anion. Either you know the names or you don't. But don't guess mono, di, tri, nothing. So the first one, sodium sulfate. Right. Now why is there a 2 there under that sodium? Because the 2 is on the top with the sulfate. Exactly. How about the next one, Na2O? Write down its name. The name of the cation, the name of the anion. Sodium Maybe you agree with Alisa? Alyssa? Sodium oxide, right? Sodium oxide. Good. Write the formula of lead two permanganate. Write the formula of lead to permanganate. Lead to permanganate. Lead to permanganate. So either you remember what permanganate is or not, but most everybody remembers the PB part, and the PB is the lead. And it's lead 2. So whatever the permanganate is, make sure you put a little 2 subscript on it because it's lead 2 permanganate. Permanganate. Eric remembered it. You see his? The PB and the MNO4. He put the 2 down there because it's a lead 2. Permanganate's MNO4. Yep, permanganate's MNO4. All right, let's try this one. Name these guys. P4O10 and ASCl3. P4O10, ASCl3. So the game plan is what? Do you see any? What are we looking for? There's an M. Metals. If you don't see any metals, use the Greek stuff, right? Name the first element, name the second element, but add an IDE to that second element. Oh, you're close, Kelly. But there's four phos four phosphoruses. So tetra. Yep. Good. Tetra, P is phosphorus. Tetraphosphorus, what oxide? Deca, or de dec. Tetraphosphorus, decoxide, or deca oxide. How about ASCl3? What was AS? Arsenic. AS is arsenic. You could say monoarsenic, but arsenic works. Last part would be trichloride. Good. Arsenic trichloride. Let's do a balancing. Balance. Balance that. 
Now, I don't know if you remember doing this, but in this balancing game, the trick was really to know what to balance first. Which element would you definitely not want to balance first? Do not balance this element first. Which one? O, because O shows up everywhere, right? That's the thinking that, that I use anyway. It seems to get me to the best answer quick. See what to try to balance first. Just don't do the O because he's everywhere, right? There's an element by himself. He'd balance him last, but there isn't one by himself, so. Just don't balance O first. And you figured out already? You just got to put a 2 where? In front of that HCl04 and it works. Right? Do you see that? You just put a 2 in front of the HCl04 and it works. All right. How about let's find the mass in grams of 0.205 moles of iron. Now, I think the terminology helps. If you ever want to convert, from moles to grams, or the other way around, grams to moles, what were you supposed to use? What was it called? A conversion factor, yeah, but what was the name of that conversion factor? M molar mass. Use molar mass. If you ever want to go from moles to grams, or grams to moles, it's molar mass. You want to go from moles to grams. Use molar mass. Right? Let the units tell you because they, you have to get things to cancel. Like for, in this case, you have to get moles to cancel, moles of iron. And they didn't say anything about sig figs, so we don't care right now. Yeah, look at Kelly's. See what she's doing? She's got it. She looked up the molar mass of iron. That's one thing I suggest, Kelly, and that's put a G right there. Keep, hang on to those units because they are really going to help you. Like Alyssa's got, she's got her moles and her grams. Make sure you put all that stuff in there because these conversions are just going to get uglier. Keep all those units. So I see a couple like 11.4 or so grams of Fe, right? Okay. Around 11.4. Try 2. Point, obtain the moles of 2.57 grams of arsenic. We're going from grams to moles, still molar mass. Grams to moles, moles to grams. Use that conversion factor Eric was talking about, molar mass. 2.57 grams of arsenic. Get it into moles. Priscilla, it's right there, 74.92, 74.92 grams in a mole. You see it, Jen, right there. All right, around 0.034, look like 0.034. Now be careful with your units. 
the grams canceled. The G's canceled. All you're left with is moles, right? Because all you're left with is moles on top. Those grams canceled. You'll lose points if you have the wrong units on your answer. Those grams canceled, you're just left with moles. A dipic acid. It has 49.3% carbon, 6.9% hydrogen, 48.3% oxygen. Its molar mass is 146. What's the molecular formula? What was the game plan to do this? Change them all to grams. Good. And then what would you do? Divide it by the molar mass to get everything into what units? Convert all the grams to what units? You want to remember? Moles. Convert all the grams to moles. Then we divide it through by the? The smallest number. Divide it through by the smallest number, right? And then you've got your empirical formula. And then to get your final answer, divide your known molar mass by your empirical molar mass. So there's a lot of steps in that. But it starts out, don't worry, Alyssa. Just list them all. Change all the percents to grams. If you're not sure, just I'll tell you step by step. Convert all the percents to grams, right? Convert all those grams to moles is what you got to do first. Just list them all out. Aaron probably would steal space with poor Paul. He doesn't need that whole big board all by him. Oh, no, he doesn't. He isn't by himself. Uh, I guess you just got to write small. <laughs> So convert all those grams to moles. Then we're going to divide through by the smallest. You get the simplest ratio of moles there. A uh, summer's got to you can jump over here with summer. She doesn't need all that space. <laughs> <I know. laughs> What to do? Oh, it's just I didn't know which problem we're doing. Oh, yeah, I skipped that one. We're oh, doing okay. this one. Well, it, Paul, the grams of carbon. So 12 grams of carbon in a mole of carbon. Oh. Right? Convert them all to moles. So the grams, that molar mass, the number has to be on the bottom. No, there, no. You, you, you have, you have. First, you converted all the percents to grams, right? You got that done. Now you get converted all the moles using molar mass. So in carbon, there's 12.01 grams in a mole. But the 12.01 grams has to be on the bottom. 12.01 grams in one mole of carbon. Because you already got rid of the percents. You don't mess with the 100 anymore. Now you pick the smallest one and divide it through by all of them by that smallest one. That 12.01 Gs of C in one mole of C. Do the same for hydrogen. Hydrogen is like 1.01, I think. So divide it through by the smallest. When you once you get once you have it all. Okay. So yes, yeah, so you have to divide it through by the smallest. That's the next step. So divide everything by 2.73. Jump way over here. Look at me. <laughs> You're encroaching on poor Alyssa's face. 
Okay. Okay, so... Do you have to times this by two, right? Not only him, but all of them. All right. Too much to round. Now, when you, after you divide it through by the smallest, did you get one of those worrisome numbers, like 1.5? If you did, you have to multiply everything through by two. Okay? So you multiply everything by... Good. So now... You have your empirical formula. There's your subscripts right there and your empirical formula. 3, 5, and 2. There it is. There's your empirical formula. And how'd you get it? Uh, you just divide 146 by... Yeah, there you go. And you're off by 2, so you got it. Exactly. So make sure the folks around you see what to do. Yes, yeah, so you have to multiply everything through by 2. And you end up with a... No, you have to, like you have a 1.5 times 2 would be 3. Yeah, multiply all those by 2. So I think you end up with a C3. Your empirical formula, like Aaron got C3H5O2. C3H5O2 should be your empirical formula, right? Because you had to multiply everything through by 2. Then you have to get your molecular formula by doing what Aaron did and some other folks did. Divide the molar mass, 146, by the empirical molar mass. So C3H5O2, three carbons, five hydrogens, two oxygens. It's around 70, 73 or so. And then you're going to get two. So that means you're off by two. Final answer should be C6H10O4, right? Good. That's your empirical formula. So now you have to find the final answer. See what H, right? See what these numbers really are. So what you do is divide, the last step was divide the molar mass, 146, by this guy's molar mass. Let's see how much you're off by. So he's 146. If you add up all these, you get 73. That means you're off by 2. So that means all these guys are off by 2. So the final answer is going to be C6H10O4. All right, did you get it? Final answer, C6H10O4. So on the exam, you're going to see this question, right? They give you the percents. They give you a molar mass. What's the formula? Know what the steps are. Right? Convert all the percents to grams. grams. Convert all the grams to moles. moles. Using what mass? The molar mass. Okay. Then you divide through by the smallest. smallest right? And play that game. If you get 0.25 on something, multiply everything by, well, if it's 0.25, multiply everything by, by 4. Right? If it's 0.5, multiply everything by 2. The other one was 0.33333, multiply everything by 3. Right? And then you have your empirical formula. To get the molecular formula, divide what by what? This guy's molar mass by the molar mass of your empirical formula. And you'll get it. Okay. I added these two, so these aren't in your notes. Find the molar mass to three sig figs of CO2. Find the molar mass to three sig figs of CO2. Find the molar mass to three sig figs of CO2. So. How do you do that? How do you find molar mass of anything? You look where? Add up all the where? Right? Can we do any rounding? Well, yeah, or these, yeah. That. But we add, find the molar mass on that chart or this chart. But don't do any rounding yet. Right? Do the rounding at the end. Right? A carbon and two oxygens. 
And don't do any rounding until we're all done here. Right? How do you find molar mass? Right? You add everything up on the periodic table. But they, they're worried about sig figs. So don't do any rounding to the very end. Priscilla, you're so close. You just can't forget units, because I'll dock you for units. And your final answer, you have to have units. And Paul, you're going to get screwed if you round. You can't round. When they say, you, you're perfectly fine if they don't say this. But if they say sig figs, you can't do any rounding until the very end. So that has to be 12.01. That has to be 15 point whatever. In this chart, it comes as 12 and 16. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, then you're fine. If you're using this. Oh, okay. yeah. But if you're, if you're using that, you use all those digits. Oh, so I use, so you have to use all the digits. Right. But if you're using this one, use all the digits they give you in there. Good. Thanks for showing me that, Aaron. So I guess it depends on what periodic table you're using, right? Depending on how many digits you're carrying. And make sure, summary, you have to have units. OK, now they want three sig figs. So possible answers are, where's one? 44.0. What, what, and what are the units? Grams per mole. So 44.0 works. Or what Aaron's got, 4.40 times 10 to the 1 grams per mole. Those all have three sig figs. Just make sure you have the right units. You have to have the right units, grams per mole. Otherwise, you're going to lose points. OK, so we found the molar mass of carbon dioxide. Now question two is, I added this one also. What is the mass of a single carbon dioxide molecule? What was the trick to doing that? Anyone remember? You want to find the mass of a single molecule of anything. You always divide what by what? What do we divide? It involves Avogadro. That Avogadro is that 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. We're, we're close. There's two ways to think about this. We can do it the way Eric's starting to think, cancel units, well, that way, or this first way. This first way is just take the molar mass, because the molar mass is how many of these things? The mass of 6.022 to 10.23. It's a mass of a lot of them. So take that molar mass, whatever you get, that 44, divide it by Avogadro. 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. That's one way to do it. The other way is to cancel your units. You have 44 grams per mole. The next box is a mole. I have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So the moles cancel. Either way works. Try it. See what you get as an answer. To get the mass of a single molecule, I think it's easiest just to divide the mass of the molar mass by Avogadro. Because then that would be the mass of one of them. Because molar mass is the mass of Avogadro's number of them. It's kind of like thinking of 12. If, it was, if you knew the mass of 12 of them, you just divide by 12 with the mass of one. But you know the mass of a lot more than 12. 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. That's a number you got to know, because I'm not giving you that number. Find the mass of one molecule, molar mass divided by Avogadro's number. And don't forget units. You got to have units. just going to be grams because yeah and the moles technically they canceled yeah. okay Let's see if you're not so sure about that one we uh this is how we did it in class probably that's probably how we did it in class Right? And what did you 
7.30 times 10 to the negative 23 grams of carbon dioxide. Grams for each carbon dioxide molecule or something, right? 7.30 times 10 to the negative 23. Okay. Good. Well, grams. You're left with grams. Because that's really grams per mole, and this is kind of really per Just mole. Moles. So the moles cancel. But it's you end up in grams. 7.30 times 10 to the negative 23. This 1.132, I think, is the last question that's kind of different than everything else is kind of the same thing over again. 1.132, ethyl acetate. In the second sentence, it says, an, an experiment requires 0.035 kilograms. What volume is this in liters? And they give us a density. Okay. These density problems. We didn't do very many of them. And I think it was confusing. Okay. Eric's got an answer. Oh, this is an interesting way to do it. Slide over, dude. This is an interesting way to do it. Right? He knows the equation for density. That's how he did it this way. He said density is mass over volume. Now, I, where you got to be careful is the units. Right? Here's is where I think he might have messed up. I think he converted the wrong way. But So you can do it the equation way, but how we did it in class is this. We said 0.092 grams in a milliliter, or you could write it in a milliliter, 0.902 grams. We used it as conversion factors, because we were, we were really big on conversion factors. So this is coming from the density. So if you, you write the density this way if you want mils to cancel. You'd write it this way if you want the grams to cancel. So the name of the game is start out with the 0.035 kilograms, and keep converting all the way until you get liters. So you got to convert probably these kilograms into what first? You see? Into grams. You got to get the kilograms into grams first so you can use one of these guys to get it into milliliters. Then we're con we'll convert the milliliters into liters. That's the only danger of doing it this way, is if you screw up on some stinking conversion, right? So you see it? So start out with the kilograms, convert it to grams. What's the conversion factor for that? How do we convert kilograms into grams? One kilograms, a thousand grams. And the kilogram, the kg has to go down here, otherwise it won't cancel. That's how you start out. See if you can get it. So your way works, dude, if you want to stick with it. it this way's safer, I think, though. Yeah, for sure. Isn't it still 35 kilograms, though? Because remember, I converted it at 35 kilograms. Oh, I had the kilo, in the, the yeah. thousands are going to cancel on you. Because you have a thousand, maybe, I think. I, I have to, it's hard for me to do it in my head. 35 kilograms, 1,000. 35 kilograms, 1,000 grams and a kilogram. Keep going. Maybe it's stuff would cancel on you. I don't know. I don't think so. All right, do you see what to do? Put the 1,000, 1 kg, like Alyssa said, 1,000 grams, and then you're probably going to use one of these guys to get the grams to cancel, and then convert the mills into liters. All right, so the kilograms are gone. Now you got to get the grams to disappear. So it looks like it would be this one. Yeah. Little m, little m. Oh, not one gram. You're right, the grams are down there. But it's going to be that one right there. A mil is 0 0.902 grams. That's how we'll get it into volume units. So you're close. The G's have to cancel. But we're going to, to get it into volume, we're going to use the density. 0 0.902 G's is 1 ml. Yeah.
That's because that's what it said. The density is 0 0.902. Okay. Okay. The G has to go down here. And then we're going to use this one. 0.902 G's per ml. Well, this one, technically, we're going to flip it so the G's will cancel. Right? 0.902 grams per milliliter, the milliliter is going to cancel that. So the 0.902 has to be down here. 0.902 grams in a milliliter. We're going to flip the density to get the grams to cancel. No. What the, de the density is 0.902. They write it weird like that, right? Okay. So you can write it, you can write, no, 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 watch. You can write that conversion factor this way, 0.902 G's per ml, or you can write it this way, a mil, 0.902 G's. Which one do you want? You want this one, so the G's will cancel, right? No, no, keep going. Don't, don't stop. Just keep going. Just keep going. 0.902 G's and an ml, right? Because they told us the density was this. So you can write that two ways. You can write it this way, or you can flip it. Where you want this one, so the G's will cancel. Then go into liters. Oh, there's a thousand. Oh, you got another zero there, right? Now you want to get into liters. So an ml and liters. Now where does the 1,000 go? Right, this will be a liter up there. So 1,000 liters? No, it's the other way around. 1,000 goes with the, uh -huh. the milli. Kind of like you, well, no, that's different. That's grams to kilograms. Okay. You got 3.88 times 10 to the negative 2 liters. Oh. Yeah, that's what Eric got. So you could write your answer like Eric's. Put 039 liters or 3.88 times 10 negative 2 liters. Either way it works. They didn't even care about sig figs, so we really don't care about sig figs. Right? Makes sense? So come by tomorrow around 7.30, 204 Mets, and we can practice some more. Oh, good. That ML does. ML. Big L. All right, and then you got to keep going. So then I put ML, ML here, down here. And then a thousand. Well, where's a thousand? A thousand goes with the MLs. Oh. A thousand millis in a so hole. So it's going to be like this? Yeah. Except the thousand's going to be with the milli. So tomorrow, 730, room 204 mats. Come by if you have some questions. I'll be around, uh, especially this afternoon. Did it work? Good deal. But you have to be available to like record today, right? Yeah. Well, hang on. Uh